Okay, first of all, let's go through what a hardware wallet is. It is a device that gives you an additional layer of security when handling your cryptocurrency wallets. Normally, you use your private key to move the funds, but if your computer has been infected or compromised, it is possible for the keys to be captured and used to steal your funds. Private keys, however, are stored on the device in case of wallets, so even if you are a victim of phishing, malware, hacking or other nefarious means of data exploitation, private keys remain accessible only to you. The Ledger Nano S on review today is quite possibly the most popular wallet on the market today, with its notable contenders being Trezor, KeepKey, Digital Bitbox and Open Dime. In Ledger's box you get the USB thumb drive looking thing, a USB cable, keychain, lanyard, instruction and recovery cards. To begin using it we have to plug it into our computer via USB and it will prompt us to visit Ledger's website and set up the device. The steps include entering a 4 digit PIN, writing down 24 recovery words on the card and begin to use the wallet. It's quite simple. In day to day use the hardware is usable, albeit cheap feeling due to our constant associations to thumb drives of days past, while the software has a minimal, polished look that is currently arguably the best on the market. Yet still, rather than going through the 50 good features that every other reviewer on the market has made and has noted, I'll go through the features that could be better executed, namely. To confirm any action you have to press both buttons on the device at the same time. Due to hardware limitations you may use a maximum of 5 wallets on the device, which is not optimal in case you are invested in multiple currencies. To add to that you have to install a separate application for every currency you use, cluttering your system. For every U2F use, a pin entry is required, which was a major point of inconvenience, although I understand the reasons behind their decision. But then again there is only one, a single pin code for any operation used on the device, which, given its 4 digit nature, is less than ideal and, given that you can have up to 5 wallets on the device, is less than perfect. Also important to note is a series of well publicized security breaches that question the claims of developers or their marketing colleagues rather, that publicly claim that the wallet is malware proof and has firmware integrity guaranteed etc. One of these exploits is the well known ledger receive attack address exploit that I have linked below in the comments. In it the ledger wallet generates the displayed received address using javascript code running on the host machine, which means that malware can replicate the code responsible for generating the receive address with its own and causing all future deposits to be sent to the attacker. Given receive addresses are consistently changing, the user has no simple way to verify the integrity of the receive address. What makes matters worse is that the software for ledger is located in the app data folder, where even unprivileged malware can modify files. Neither does the wallet implement any integrity check tools to its source. The developers are aware of the issue and will not fix it. The solution as such is simple. When the user opens the receive tab, it sends a request to the ledger to show the public key on the hardware wallet and if the device does not recognize the key, it warns the user. Nevertheless, in early 2018 when we were making this video, the Ledger Nano S is simply still better than the competition due to its polished interface, portability and widespread availability. But certain bad UX decisions and corner cutting regarding security make it hard for us to wholeheartedly recommend it. Thanks for watching this video on Discharge Networks. Don't forget to comment and subscribe to see more videos on cryptocurrencies in the future.